Hello, my name is Khal Siddiqui and in this video I'm going to teach you how to diagnose and repair your Garmin traffic cable. Now this uh, Garmin, tra this particular cable is Garmin G60, GTM60 and uh, they are very expensive. They're not cheap. They're like $80, $60. If you buy them new, it could be as, as high as 100 depending where you are. And uh, sometimes they get, uh, you know, damaged or destroyed or defective and you need to fix them or repair them. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay. The, why should we throw them away if we can fix them, right? Okay. So let's get started and see what we need to do. Okay. So... The first thing you need to do is you need to check the fuse to make sure uh, if this light is it doesn't even turn on it could be something as simple as the fuse so let me zoom in this is how we check the fuse the fuse is accessible from the tip the tip of this right here will open and from there you can access the fuse how do you open the tip and that's what I'm going to show you you get a long nose plier you there's there are a couple of notches you put the plier in there push down and twist to open position let me do that again twist to open position and this comes off so put it back in twist push down twist to close position or clockwise uh, to lock it counterclockwise to open it okay now let's see the fuse let's check the fuse so first we check the fuse with a voltmeter uh, i mean a uh, continuity continuity meter or ohms meter or whatever you want to call it so this should be uh, when I check this, it should show like, uh, you know, continuity with no resistance or, you know, 0.01 ohms or something like that. Let's find out how much continuity we have. Okay, so this fuse is good. Okay, now we will f see what else is wrong. If the fuse is good, why this thing is not turning on, right? Now, this is a good working cable. This is a good working cable, but I'm opening this and taking it apart so that I could teach you. Next thing is to open this. How do you open this? Once you remove the fuse, you simply put a, a screwdriver here and pry it open like this because they are just snapped. There are no screws here or there. It's just snapped together. Watch. You have to do it gently and then put a prying tool here. Remember, this is, it's not very simple, simple to take this apart. Not very simple. I mean, it's not impossible, but not very simple. Okay. So the front has been taken apart. They actually glue them. So sometimes it cracks or breaks, but still you can fix it. And it's much easier to repair the crack than it is to purchase a new uh, unit. So let's get a flat screwdriver. We are getting a flat screwdriver. Let's put this here to provide space and we're putting a flat screwdriver here and twisting it. Okay. That's what we are doing here. Okay. There you go. Now on this side, we do the same exact thing. There you go. So basically, this is how you snap it open. And this is exactly how you close it. Okay. Now, look what we have here. Let me zoom in even further. What do we have here? We have a, a black wire and a red wire. This should show 5 volts output. 
We only have two wires. It's very important, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm about to get to this why there are six pins here. Like right here, we have six pins, right? Six pins. And why there's only two? What happens to the other four? That's the reason what I'm going to explain. This circuit is nothing more than an inverter. This is an inverter. Step-down inverter or voltage reducer. And you get the 12 volts, goes to here. And then on the other side, there's a IC chip. Let me show you the IC chip. Let me show you the IC chip. This is the IC chip that the DC voltage comes to here. And this is a timer, a clock timer, probably like a 555 or something. And it generates a high frequency. The DC is generated at high frequency, goes to this coil, and that coil will use a uh, diode to make it back, change it back to DC. So, do you understand? Coming, DC comes in, becomes AC, changes to AC with, with this oscillating circuit, high frequency AC. Why high frequency, you would ask? Why is it high frequency? Because if it wasn't high frequency, the toroids or these transformers would be much bigger and there would be there, there would be a need for much more windings and coils and much more weight. In order to make it lightweight and small and compact, you have to have high frequency because then you need very few coils, few turns. Very few turns will transfer the same amount of uh, power because the frequency is very high. And that's the reason why. They're using high frequency and then that high frequency is dropped down becomes back to DC with the diodes. Some use bridge rectifiers, four diodes. Some use single, some use dual diodes. Long story short, we should have five volts reading on the output here. So we have to get 12 volt in, five volts out. So let's find out if that is the case, okay? All right, so this cable right here is my positive 12 volt and this is n negative 12 volt positive and negative 12 volt okay so let's zoom out a little bit so we could apply the voltage and find out if we are getting the you know desired voltage that we want to get okay so how do we find out the first thing we need to do is we need to apply uh, this to the tip of this unit and uh, apply uh, this one to the surrounding this is positive this is negative that's how we connect this all right so let's connect this and see what where we get we apply this to the tip and we apply this to the surrounding And voila, we got our light running. I don't know if you can see that light, but, you know, that light is running. You see that? Yeah. So now let's check the voltage and see if we have 5 volts here, right? Okay. Let's check the voltage. Moment of truth. Okay, so it should be in DC voltage because this is DC. And let's put this here and see what kind of voltage we get. Okay, perfect. We have our 5 volts DC exactly as expected. What does that tell us? This circuit passed the, pro passed the test. Whatever problem we have must be in the middle circuit which is here in the traffic receiver okay so we turn this off we turn it off and put it back together keep in mind actually i'm not going to put this back together because i need to get back to why there is only uh, two wires when we have six wires here what happens to the rest that's why i'm not going to close it now let's get to the center piece the center piece is also snap open no big deal 
you put a flat screwdriver here like this and you snap it open and then you do the same here and voila we got it separated there you go this is actually how it should have come off like this but you know you get the picture it's separated now okay so this is separated now watch something very interesting let me zoom in okay let me zoom in what is interesting from here we have four wires as you can see we have red white green and black but from this side we only have three wires we have black red and white so some of these wires here they only have business with a circuit here they have no business with the circuitry here from this circuitry all we need is five volts all we need is five volts so now question is what is this white wire for and why does this white wire disappear and doesn't come out of this end see there's nothing coming out of this end except for the black and red the white doesn't even come off it disappears somewhere in the middle why is that the answer to that is this is the antenna cable this is all it is just radio antenna FM antenna to receive traffic information this is not supposed to come out at the other end now this is also connected to this which is your external antenna port this is used if you would like to have if the signal is weak and you want to have much stronger external antenna in your vehicle or internal antenna but much longer cable this is what you use you plug in the antenna okay now if you have a problem with this plug right here you can only change this plug by simply soldering these four wires desoldering these four wires and replacing it with a new one if you have a problem there if you have a problem in this circuitry this circuitry you could use from other Garmin cheap Garmin car chargers not traffic regular car chargers could be replaced as long as there are two amps you cannot use a single amp see this is a two amp here it has to be a two amp you cannot use one amp or 1.5 amp so any Garmin two amp circuitry this circuitry would work with the traffic cable why is that inform imp important the information is important because a, a circuitry of uh, I mean a charger like this which people throw away you know a charger like this most people they throw it away they're like okay I don't need this it's not working why they throw it away they throw it away if this end is bad I'm talking about I'm not talking about a traffic cable I'm talking about a regular charger which you can buy for 10 15 20 dollars you could buy one of those a defective one for five dollars or even a brand new one even a brand new one for for you know 20 bucks and take this circuitry and fix your traffic cable if the problem is here right okay so let's put snap this back in let's snap this back in Okay, this goes in like that this goes in like there this is all is good now remember because this was this was snapped in it wasn't uh, actually it was like glued uh, and snapped and glued it there wasn't there weren't any screws you might have to use pliers to lock it or snap it back in in place it may not be that simple and you, you will need some glue like a uh, super glue to hold it back together and snap it locked together because otherwise with, with the power of your fingers you may not be able to do that see you need bigger pliers than this to, to do that to, to snap it back in place so for now I'm gonna just use some tape so I could move on to next section I'm gonna just use some tape I'll get to this later snap it back in put some super glue and then put this one back in and you know 
after I put some super glue here, I'll put this one back in and I'm back in business. But for now, we are talking on this edge. So now let's find out what's the normal voltage uh, here and here. Okay, let's find out. Let me put this back in. Actually, I need to open this to put uh, my voltmeter, uh, power supply, I mean, so that we can do the measurements again. Okay, so I'm going to open this and I will put my plus in the center and put my minus or negative and the surrounding. There you go. And then now let's find out if we get correct readings on these two pins. It should be 5 volts. So let's turn the voltmeter on. Let's go a little this way. So the voltmeter is inside the frame. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'll get my correct voltage here. But let's find out. And there you go. We have our correct 5 volts here. There is no voltage there. That's zero. No voltage. That's completely zero. Got just antenna cable. Okay. On this end, I should have plus and minus here. Okay. This is... And there you go. The red and the black is just transferring the electricity from here to there. These two are data for traffic. So they have no business with DC voltage. This is the only part that has business with DC voltage. Okay, so this is good. That's good that this circuit is not dropping the signal. Now, if we are still not receiving traffic data from this cable, so that means it, the problem is either with this circuit board or the problem is with this guy right here. With this right, right here. Okay, now this needs to be replaced with Garmin Original. You cannot use any other one. If you use another one that's not Garmin Original, uh, then what happens is that their GPS will go to PC sync mode. So you cannot use another cable here. All right, so let's snap this back closed. This part, uh, this section right here, doesn't need uh, gluing. It's just snapping in and snapping out. Very, very simple. So I'm going to snap it back closed. Okay, that's good. Okay. There you go. You can't even tell it was opened. That's how easy it is in the center port. Okay, so I'm going to close this. And basically, that's how you repair it. Uh, check, make sure the this circuit gives you output. Make sure that one, this circuit here, gives you output and you get your 5 volts. And even if the traffic doesn't work, it should still work for DC powering up the GPS. And if you want a functional traffic, then this is your culprit. This is what the piece that needs to be replaced or repaired or soldered or checked. Now, you can't uh, repair these in component level because the IC chips inside are all programmed and uh, it's very hard to reprogram those. It's, it's not something that you could do it at home you, to, you, to reprogram unless you have an IC programmer and you're advanced and all that. So other than that, it's pretty simple. You know the input voltage, the output voltage. Uh, that input uh, here should be uh, 12 and the output is 5. And uh, basically it's a step-down circuit, DC circuit. Hopefully you learned a thing or two from this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.